Ever wish you could like just hit a mental refresh button? You know, just kind of like clear everything out and tap into this like wellspring of peace and joy. Ishwaramba Sutta Shriman. Hmm. Well, that's kind of what we're looking at today. We're diving deep into kirtan and bhajans. Yeah. These like ancient practices that are way more than just music. You're right. It's not just about listening. It's active meditation, but with incredibly powerful chanting and music designed to shift your consciousness. Yeah. And the coolest part is, these practices have been around for thousands of years, stemming from the Bhakti movement in India. Thousands of years. Okay, now you've definitely piqued my interest. What was so special about this Bhakti movement? It was like a spiritual revolution centered around passionate devotion to the divine. And here's the kicker, anyone could participate. No matter your social standing, everyone was welcome. So no velvet ropes or VIP sections in this spiritual gathering. I like it. But you mentioned something about shifting consciousness. What does that actually mean in this context? Yeah, so it refers to the idea that kirtan and bhajans impact us on a level beyond our everyday awareness. So influencing our thoughts, emotions, and even our sense of self. Think of it like this. You're not just hearing the music. You're allowing the vibrations of the sound to like wash over you and create a tangible shift within. Okay, I'm intrigued. Shri Satya Sai Bhagavan Tava Suprabhatam but how do these practices actually work? Is it the music, the chanting, or a bit of both? It's a beautiful synergy of elements. Let's start with the chanting. Specifically, the repetition of mantras. These are just random sounds. They're sacred syllables that are believed to carry a specific vibrational energy. Vibrational energy. Now I have to ask, is there any science behind this? Or is it more of a spiritual belief? It's actually a fascinating blend of both. Think of it like this. Everything in the universe is in a state of vibration. Even our thoughts and emotions have their own unique vibrations. And these mantras, when chanted with focus and intention, are believed to resonate with and influence our own energy field. Hmm, that's fascinating. So it's almost like using sound to tune our inner vibrations. Exactly. And this is where the music comes in. The melodies and rhythms used in kirtan and pajans are specifically designed to enhance these vibrations and induce a meditative state. They act as a carrier way for the mantras, amplifying their effects. Okay, now I understand why it's more than just a concert. But what about the emotional aspect? I imagine pouring your heart into the chanting adds another layer to the experience. Absolutely. That's actually a key ingredient. The bhakti tradition emphasizes devotion pouring your heart and soul into the practice. It's about connecting with something larger than yourself, whether that's a deity, a universal energy, or simply a deep sense of peace within. And when you're surrounded by other people doing the same thing, I imagine that energy multiplies. Precisely. There's a palpable power in collective chanting. It creates a sense of unity, amplifies the vibrations, and allows you to tap into a collective energy that's truly uplifting. Imagine a room filled with people all chanting for peace, love and connection. The energy is contagious. Wow, I'm already feeling a sense of calm just picturing it. It's a powerful experience. And the beauty is you don't need to be a musician or a spiritual guru to feel the effects. It's accessible to everyone. Just come with an open mind and a willingness to explore. Okay, we've geeked out on the how, the mantras, the music, that collective energy. But you're probably wondering, what does this actually feel like? What's in it for me? Yeah, that's the big question. And while the experience is unique for everyone, there are some common threads. Imagine this. You're caught in the whirlwind of your day. Thoughts racing to-do list overflowing. <sighs> Tell me about it. And then you step into this space of chanting and music mm -hmm. and the vibrations begin to work their magic. And slowly you feel this sense of calm washing over you. It's like hitting the reset button on your mind. A reset button. Don't we all need that sometimes? So we're talking about feeling more grounded, centered. What else? Yeah, it's not just about relaxation. But that's definitely a welcome benefit. Kirtan and Pajans are also known for fostering a really deep sense of inner peace and clarity. The repetitive chanting, combined with that meditative music, 
It helps quiet the mental chatter that often clutters our minds. Right, it's like quieting the noise to hear your own inner voice more clearly. But you mentioned feeling, not just thinking. How do Kirtan and Pajans affect us on an emotional level? Remember how we talked about devotion being a key ingredient? Mm -hmm. That's where the heart opening aspect comes in. These practices are designed to help you connect with yourself, express deeper emotions, like love, compassion, gratitude. So it's not just about feeling good, it's about cultivating a deeper sense of connection with yourself and the world around you. Exactly. And that connection can be incredibly powerful, not just during the practice itself, but also in your everyday life. When you tap into these positive emotions, love, compassion, forgiveness, it naturally spills over into how you interact with others, and how you navigate the world. Now that's a beautiful ripple effect. Uh, but let's talk about that connection to something bigger, the divine, the universe, however you define it. Is that something you actually experience during Kirtan and Hajans? Or is it more of an abstract concept? That's where it gets really interesting and mm -hmm. admittedly a little more difficult to put into words. Mm -hmm. It's not like you suddenly have a conversation with the divine, at least not in the traditional sense. But many people describe feeling this profound sense of oneness, of unity with something larger than themselves during these practices. So it's more of an intuitive feeling, a deep knowing that you're part of something much greater than yourself. Precisely. And that realization, that feeling of interconnectedness can be incredibly liberating and empowering. It shifts your perspective, helps you see the world with more compassion, and ultimately allows you to tap into a deeper sense of purpose and meaning. It sounds like this goes way beyond just singing and chanting. It's about personal transformation. It absolutely can be. And the broody is, this transformation happens organically through the power of sound rhythm, shared intention. It's not about forcing anything, yeah. but rather allowing yourself to be open to the experience. Okay, I'm getting chills just thinking about the possibilities here. This idea of personal transformation through chanting and music, it's powerful stuff. But it makes you wonder, what about those who are new to all of this? Is it something anyone can experience, or does it require years of practice? Well, that's the beauty of kirtan and bhajans. They're accessible to everyone, regardless of your background or your beliefs. Okay. You don't need any prior experience with meditation or chanting or even spirituality for that matter to feel the benefits. Think what? of them like this. You don't need to understand how music works to enjoy a good song. Right. That's a good point. It's about feeling it, not overthinking it. But I imagine having a sense of community, of belonging, can make the experience even more powerful. Absolutely. And that's something we're seeing more and more these days. People from all walks of life coming together to share in these practices there's something incredibly special about joining your voice with others, feeling that collective energy, and knowing you're not alone on your journey. Yeah, it's like finding your tribe for the soul. And in a world that often feels increasingly isolating, that's more valuable than ever. So if someone listening is intrigued by all of this, the chanting, the music, the potential for personal transformation, what would you say to encourage them to give it a try? I'd say come with an open heart and a willingness to explore. Mm. You might be surprised by what you discover. Mm. Even if you're initially drawn to the music, the rhythmic chanting, or even just the curiosity of trying something new. There's a depth to these practices that can unfold over time. Mm. It's like opening a door to a whole new way of experiencing yourself and the world around you. Exactly. And the beautiful thing is, it's a journey without a finish line. There's always something new to discover a deeper layer to uncover. So it's not about achieving some kind of spiritual enlightenment overnight, but rather about embracing the practice and allowing it to unfold naturally. You got it. It's a lifelong exploration, a way of continually coming back to yourself, finding peace within, and connecting with something larger than yourself. It sounds like a pretty incredible journey to embark on. And who knows? Maybe these ancient practices hold a key to unlocking a greater sense of peace and joy, both within ourselves and in the world around us. That's a beautiful thought and one worth exploring. Indeed it is. So, dear listener, we encourage you to take that first step and experience the power of kirtan and pajans for yourself. You might just discover a source of peace, connection and joy you never knew existed. <laughs>
शिव शंभू 